case of this monastery, like uh, it has two different colleges. We call it the upper college and the lower college. Yes. So earlier, like uh, 60 years before, this monastery has 5,500 monks. Okay, which is like the second biggest monastery in the history of Tibet. How many now? 200. So what's the biggest? The biggest monastery is also in Lhasa. From here, like uh, eight. Eight kilometers to the west. Uh, Samir, not Samir, Debu. Debu. Samir is like the first monastery, uh, not the biggest. Uh, Debu monastery has like 10,000 monks. Mm. Okay. 60 years before. That's 10,000 monks monastery called Debu monastery. Right the biggest monastery in the world. So we also see some part of the monastery up here. Do you see that? Oh yeah. And also you, see, you can see the paintings on the rock. The painting. Yes. We call Tanka. Tanka. Yes. T H A N G E K A Tanka. Before we start the lecture, let me give you a brief introduction regarding the master here. Okay, so his name is Tokye. This time, no Nima, no Deji. <laughs> Tokye. And he is like a national 4A graded tanga painter. Okay. Uh, and he has been painting over the past 23 years. Okay. So this is the reason. And uh, we approach to him and ask for a lecture. It's fine, no problem. Alright? So don't feel sleepy, okay? This is a very precious time. Mm -hmm. Like uh, he left the job down here and came to here to give us lecture. Right? Okay, so first of all, he says, let's welcome everybody to his studio, studio, right? Okay. And uh, I'm a little wrong, like uh, he said, he was uh, painting over the past 27 years. Yeah. 27 years. Okay. And uh, he said, uh, the history of Tango painting in Tibet has the, at least 1,300 years of history. Mm -hmm. It came uh, from 7th century. When the Tibetan Buddhism came to Tibet, the Tanga painting has also came to Tibet. So it has roughly like 1,300 years of history. Yes. Mm. 
Previously, he was in school, like uh, other school students, okay? But uh, when he was learning all these mathematics, science, geography, and all this, it's like a headache. Right? <laughs> but he like uh, the special class called the uh, art class, okay, where you can do something. So his special interest, like when he was young, okay, when he was a young boy, like when he sees some uh, painters, they were painting something, you know, like it draws his full attention, you know, towards that. And then he thought, oh, if I learn all these things, like mathematics, there is no future, he was thinking. Better to learn painting. So this is the reason. Before he actually paint uh, Tanka, he used to be a painter. Okay, to paint on the houses, mm -hmm. like uh, what mm -hmm. we have seen, all these beautiful mm -hmm. paintings, the decorations. Yes. And it would those because in the scale of my life. I not and then once he started painting the uh, decorations, all this work, he was feeling also good, you know, so that he don't have to take money from the home. Like at least he was giving some money, right? Like uh, he don't have to ask his uh, parents every time for money. And uh, uh, I think it's good, as he said, like you don't have to rely on your parental key, right? Special key, like that. Then after that, he decided to go to a Tanka uh, learning center where he has spent at least eight years to learn Tanka. Yes, eight years. So in traditional Tibetan, Tanga painting, you, if you spend like one, two years, uh, you don't know, okay, like uh, you won't be a good student, actually. Yes, so you need to spend at least six, seven years. Only then you can graduate with Tankas, okay, then you can paint on your own Tankas. Yes. ジェリーネレタスジェネチェリーノーノチェリーネレタスジェネチェリーノーノチェリーネレタスジェネチェリーノーノチェリーネレタスジェネチェリーノーノチェリーネレタスジェネチェリーノーノチェリーネレタスジ
So without doing these things, I mean speaking good Tibetan, like uh, there's no way to learn a tanka, to learn how to bend a tanka. Yes. あれ、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、
special way of painting that Tibetans only do it. Okay, you think anybody who is like interested, you can do it. Okay, and uh, even in Tibet University, during my time, it's not the other hours in the university. Like uh, nowadays, people put like the uh, Tanka class. Okay, Tanka class. Anybody who wants to do like a painting inside, yes, you can learn Tanka painting. Uh, we do have, you know, like a cultural exchange cultural exchange program with the European countries and also America. Yes. So even in Haza, there are a lot of Westerners, like uh, students from the West. Like they are uh, in Tibet University, they learn Tibetan language. Uh, so I think everything depends on your interest. Once you are interested in doing something in particular, you can do it very quickly. So I remember, you know, like there are uh, people from Norway, I girl I know, like uh, she speaks really, you know, like good Tibetan within two years. Mm. Okay, because of her interest, right? So like she, she was there in the Tibet University like four years, but second year she was like almost like a local Tibetan. Mm -hmm. I was surprised, you know, like this. So we have a cultural exchange, like where uh, Western students they also learn about Tanka painting in Tibet University. So during my time, Tibet University, only one Tibet University in Lhasa. But now they have already like five, six in Lhasa only. Already five universities in Lhasa. All right, it's good. It's like a progress regarding education. It means at least you can become like a literate person. You know what's going around the world. Okay, when I was a kid, uh, 1989 or something, when I was six or uh, five, five or six, my father, he brought me from the village to Lhasa. I was thinking, this is our world. This is the block. I, I never know about the existence of other, you know, like, uh, countries, right? So she, he took me to the monastery. I saw a foreigner first time. I was like a skid. <laughs> really? Like a yellow hair, blue eyes. They're very different and quite big. Like, I was just hiding behind my father. Okay, my father, he was saying, go and say hello. Yes, for me, it's not going to work. Really, things have changed, right? Nowadays, like when you are here, nobody will look at you like, like this, right? Everybody think uh, to go on their own. Okay, unless and until you go in a very rural area, like where people out of their curiosity, they say hello, like that. Otherwise, in the town, it's okay, right? No problem. So, things have really changed <coughs> very fast. At the time, I was like really scared <laughs> okay, to say hello. So, finally, I managed to say hello and he gave me a pen, I remember. <laughs> mm. I was just thinking, like every time you say hello, he gave me a pen. I tried to say the next hello, no, <laughs> yes, because that time, like uh, after that, uh, like I was like, how to say, Conscious, a little bit conscious, you know, awake, oh, awake, God. yeah, like awake, oh, these people, they are there like that. So then I really try to, you know, like uh, study more about these things. <laughs> and then at that time, there are a lot of foreigners, they bring, you know, like uh, sweet candies, right? Mm -hmm. And then so they bring, yeah, they bring um, the pans and like small magazines. They give it to the village uh, children. You say hello, they give you one. Like that. So that, that's, you know, the reason I said, do hello, only one pen. <laughs> like that, they do it. Uh, so regarding the material of our tanka, like the basement, the basement material, if possible, like 100% cotton. Okay, 100% cotton or woolen. <coughs> Nowadays, like it's difficult to get a 100% woolen cloth, right? <coughs> so like um, you know, cotton cloth is. So for a Tibetan tanka, like uh, the good thing. We use, you know, like uh, mineral colors, okay, mineral colors, but nowadays uh, not 100%. You go to the market, they use chemicals, okay, chemical color, okay, they are just to sell it. So 
Like this tanka and one tanka you see around the Bago area, around the temple, the price is like double, mm -hmm. maybe cheaper, oh dear, because they use all the cheap materials mm -hmm. just for selling for the tourists, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now here he used everything original. Mm -hmm. Okay, like uh, uh, even the mineral color and one important thing, in Tibetan tanka you can see a lot of gold, right, a lot of gold. It is a special characteristic of the Tibetan tanka. So the purpose of Tanga painting, like in the monasteries, we have seen all these beautiful murals, right? The murals on the wall. It's very similar to Tanga. What they paint on the wall is also Buddha's image, all these protected, even similar here. So why do they paint on this particular piece of wool or cotton? It's like uh, for those people who are like uh, illiterate, okay? Uh, who are illiterate, they don't know how to read means you don't know how the Buddha look like. But when you see a particular painting like this, you recognize, right? Okay, for example, this image, if somebody sees, I say, this is blue, this is green tar. Next time you see, oh, this is green tar. So at least they can also wash it. Another thing is like uh, for easy transportation, right? Easy transportation. Like uh, in early time, uh, we actually keep on camping, right? From one place to another. So at that time, like this one, easy. Like you can just roll it up, bring it with you. If there's a big image, like difficult, and also in case it may break down, like this. So this, this is the tourism. Another thing, from Tibetan Buddhism, the Tanka painting we use for dead people. This is the reason. In Tibetan, as I told you, if you want to take a picture of somebody, if you ask, as I told you, usually they deny, because. Once somebody dies in our home, we don't keep anything that belongs to the dead people. We yeah, maybe give the good clothes to anybody who want to use or burn it. Okay. All the pictures, all every belonging. Make sure that nothing is left. Alright? Instead, what you do, you go to a master like him, ask him paid a good tanka for the dead person. Okay? Good tanka. And like if you say this is 10,000 RMP, we never bargain. Okay? Mm. Because this is for the dead person. And he has also like uh, done a lot of, lot of job when he is alive. So we think this is like uh, actually we need to spend money. Okay? Make sure that his soul remain in peace. His soul think, oh, my family, they are doing good thing to me, right? Make him try to satisfy him. Then they could paint a good tanka like this. You put it in your religious room, right? So every time you see the tanka, oh, this is my, you know, like uh, my brother, my sister. You feel like praying, right? Okay, you feel like praying. Or what we do, that particular tanka of the dead person, we may, you know, like offer it to the monastery. Okay, whether you pay 10,000 or 20,000, you offer it to the monastery. Then in the monastery, a lot of people come every day. Means, when they see the tanka, they don't recognize this is the uh, tanka for the dead person. They, think that this, they all believe, you know, this is a good tanka, they pray for you. Means, that dead soul actually goes, you know, like uh, for his next relay, like for his next life faster because of all these prayers made by people. So this is the reason. In Tibetan we do it like that. Usually what we do, one tanka, one image, 
for the dead person. The image we usually keep in our home. And Tanka usually we offer to the monastery. Okay, so that you got prayers from different people, right? From different people, different prayers. So if you keep it in your home, like maybe you know few mantras, not more than that. But different people, different mantras. It's good, what we believe. so some tankas, you know, like uh, for example, this is like a uh, green tar, green tar, right? Okay, but they are also sometimes they used to paint a tanka about a life history, life history of a master. Like for example, this master here at the center, this is the famous master who came from Qinghai, the teacher of the first Dalai Lama. Okay, at the center, mm -hmm. and he is called Tsongkhapa Master. At the side, you can see two of his, <coughs> not the first Dalai Lama here. So one of these uh, students founded Sera Monastery, the monastery where we are going now, after the lecture, in 1419, 15th century. So like uh, two years later, this monastery marks 600 years of founding anniversary, from 1416 to 2019 to 2019, 600 years of founding anniversary. Okay. Yes. So if we want to paint a tanka of this master, there will be many tankas. <coughs> telling about the history of the life history. If, if you start painting a tanka of the Buddha, okay, so the Buddha, when he was alive, he has done like 12 big things. Okay, so all these 12 big things, they can paint it in a tanka right in the mode of tanka yes so it will be many tanka right and tomorrow uh, we will go also to the tibetan lecture center it's confirmed no don't worry it will be there so you will see tibetan medical tanka medical tanka or medical charts right <coughs> so that is also considered as a part of tibetan tanka yes all these medical charts because uh, from the time of the fifth Dalai Lama, he used to actually uh, start to teach the students uh, Tibetan medicine with the tanka. Okay, like this. Yes. Okay, so uh, like this, and also you, you see cloth and everything. So the master here, he do the main um, painting. And uh, the side cloth, everything that you have to bring to another person. Okay? He does that too? Yeah. Uh, he don't do it. Uh, you have to bring it to other person. Oh, I see. Yes. And they do it. Okay. Yes. And then regarding Tanka, when, they, when we talk about the teaching of the Buddha, the measurement, actually emphasize the image, image, the image, okay, not the surrounding like the, the clouds, the clouds and everything you can paint based on your imagination, okay, but the image you need to go through the Buddha's teaching, in which he said like uh, the, all the measurement, right, okay. Based on those sketches that you yeah, 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 yeah. When, when you do a tanka for a lama like this, yes. are there also specific images that need to be around the lama, or are you okay. making them up? Thank you. This is a good question. 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 Traditionally speaking, you know, like uh, uh, tanka, the outer lining, 
should be like that, where you see like a small uh, rectangle thing here. Okay, what that we believe is like the entrance. Okay, and then you see another thing on the top. That the exit. Okay. Yeah, that the exit entrance exit should be like that, but uh, the design, the master, they don't do it. Okay, it also depends on the people who ask and also the quality, right? Somebody wants like good quality, somebody say, oh, middle is okay. Somebody say for me, it's okay, whatever you use, like that. Any other questions?